New Super Mario Brothers, a series plagued with the infamous Nobody Cares Syndrome. It's a cavalcade of 2D Mario adventures that brought the series back into the mainstream. Everybody's played a new Super game, these things were in back in the day. But now most people look at these games and issue a cease and desist to Nintendo for making games they don't want anymore. It's not because they're bad games, far from it, they're designed incredibly well and control exactly how you'd like them to. It's just we got four of them in the span of six years. Now of course if you look back at the early days of 2D Mario platformers, the number isn't too awful crazy. Crazy. Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, World, and Land came out within five years of each other. The difference is, each one of these games had their own identity in terms of visuals, sound, controls, difficulty, power-ups, design, length, the list goes on, these games could each stand on their own. The new Super Mario Bros. series laughs in the face of this and did the same thing four times in a row. But let's be fair here, let me take a look at each of the new Super Mario Bros. games and see how each of them are these days. The year is 2004, and with the Nintendo DS formally being unveiled to the public at E3, a prototype of a new 2D Mario game was thrown in there as well. The game was obviously still in very early development, but a brand new 2D Mario game was a big deal. Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins was the last 2D Mario game released all the way back in 1992. The only thing we got after that was Yoshi's Island, Wario Land, and the Super Mario Advance series, a series of four remakes of prior 2D Marios. New Super Mario Bros. was initially conceived as the fifth in the Advance series, but later became its own thing entirely. On May 15th, 2006, New Super Mario Bros. was released on the Nintendo DS to critical and commercial success, people went nuts for this thing. It was the first Super Mario Bros. game in forever, it was fun, and was on THE hot handheld at the time. The DS was so popular man, people would go to Walmart for some eggs and leave with 4 extra DS's. People were already eating it up with games like Nintendogs and Brain Age, you had a Super Mario Bros. game to the mix, and not only do you lure in kids who never played a Mario game, but the older folk who played Mario back in the day. It was a phenomenon, but how does it hold up? New Super Mario Bros. is very similar to previous 2D Mario games, but very different at the same time. It takes a little bit from every title, yet brings a lot new to the table. The story here is... wait for it. Yeah. To be fair, Bowser Jr. kidnaps Peach this time around, and is, in my opinion, the main villain here. We only fight Bowser a few times, and the first time around he's cremated, just joshing you, his skin is melted off, haha! <laughs> Other than that, standard stuff here. In terms of gameplay, it's a standard modernized Mario romp you try to get to the end of the level. There are loads of secrets crammed in each stage, though, the game was specifically designed to be played over and over again. There are three star coins placed in each stage, some easy to nab, some hard. The star coins can be exchanged for access to more pathways on the world map, whether that be to toad houses that give you extra lives and power-ups or entirely new levels. Some stages also include secret exits which allow for alternate routes. None of this is new, this has all been in previous games, however they're applied extremely well in this game. Precursors to the star coins could be found in Super Mario World where they were dragging coins and god I've devoted my life to figuring out what purpose those things had. Collecting all of them in a level gave you a one-up and a slight feeling of Jesus Christ why did I do that? The star coins are way more valuable, they actually have a purpose and are fun to collect. But nothing's fun to collect if the game isn't fun to control, and New Super Mario Bros. feels really solid. They did something interesting here, they took how 3D Mario controls and implemented a lot of that in this 2D game. Mario now has a ton of moves he never had before in this dimension, he can ground pound, wall jump, triple jump, it feels so natural to let these rip and they are excellent additions to Mario's 2D moveset. Now let's talk power-ups, a Mario series staple. The main ones you'll be seeing here are mushrooms to grow bigger and fire flowers to shoot fireballs. Sometimes you'll get an invincibility star or one of the three new power-ups introduced here that are, in my opinion, the Mega Mushroom, the headliner of New Super Mario Brothers, allowing Mario to finally qualify for Ripley's Believe It or Not. You just absolutely demolish everything in your path. As a kid, I found this to be one of the coolest things ever. Now I get diagnosed with being underwhelmed every time I use it. It's really only in a few levels. It's just kind of an automatic wind button. You just walk through a huge chunk of the stage, sometimes destroying pathways you need to access to nap star coins. It can be fun, but the Mega Mushroom is just the definition of a gimmick. On the complete opposite side of the power-up spectrum, the Mini Mushroom. This is considered a power-up? Mario Anti grows to go face to face with pocket change, and the only benefits from this power up are Christen on water, a floatier jump if you consider that a benefit, and access to secrets. It's actually the only way you can get to the two extra worlds in the game, you have to defeat two bosses as mini Mario. I like the concept of this power up, basically giving you access to extra areas in the world, but like I said, is this even a power up? This is something you begrudgingly accept when you want to get somewhere specific in a level. I don't think anybody's ever gone, shit, is that a mini mushroom? And finally, this. The blue shell. This power-up definitely has its fans. 
I'm not one of them. It allows Mario to swim with ease and... Uh, I hate that Mario automatically goes into the shell while running. It turns the game into a migraine factory. I just want to run throughout the level, but instead Mario goes into the shell and now I have to deal with this. You ricochet off walls and it just hurts my feelings. I always pass up on the blue shell. The game is split into eight worlds in total, but two of them are more so considered special worlds. If you make a beeline to the end of the game, you only go through six worlds. Now that makes the game sound significantly shorter than what you may want it to be, but in my opinion, for a DS game in 2006, this was a fine length. Sure, you can beat the game in around six hours or so, but you can milk this game for quite a long time. There's so many secrets to discover. You can find all the extra levels, get all the star coins, or play the greatest selection of minigames ever served. Yeah, we have to discuss these. As a little bonus, Nintendo included an array of touchscreen-based minigames that you can start playing the minute you pop the game in. The majority of these are ripped right from Super Mario 64 DS, but here they're available from the start. And man, these were the slickest back in the day. The minigames where you drew lines always impressed me. Like, you can draw these trampolines and they appear. Yes, this is all I needed back in 2006. Gambling played a key role in my childhood, so it was great to have a Luigi variant to play at whim. I always played this Bobomb minigame though, you have to put the right colors in the right area, my color blindness never stopped me from having this much fun. Speaking of the touchscreen, New Super Mario Bros. utilized it by showing your progress through the level, which I always appreciated, I wish more games did this. Also showcase was a power up in reserve and the amount of star coins collected. Sometimes entering a pipe would throw the action on the bottom screen, I mean I guess it's a cool effect, but doing this makes it so you can't use your item in reserve, which is kinda lame. Graphically and sound wise, New Super Mario Bros. is completely competent, but not too awful impressive. We have a mix of 2D sprites and 3D models obviously so everything runs smoothly on the DS. It looks fine and honestly makes the game visually more interesting compared to future entries just because it looks more distinct. There's some decent tracks here in the sound department but nothing that I'd consider amazing or anything, just completely passable and does the job. Eight worlds, a decent campaign, mini games, there's a competitive multiplayer mode here too. New Super Mario Bros. was and still is a pretty solid package. But why isn't this generally looked at alongside the other 2D Mario Triumphs? Back when it was first released, many reviewers lauded New Super Super Mario Bros. as a modern classic, a game that would be looked at in the same way as Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. 3 are today. However, many just don't talk about this one as much. Why? In my opinion, it's just how the game presents itself. New Super Mario Bros. doesn't feel like a sequel or an evolution. It's just a new Super Mario game. Even looking at the box, it just screams, this ain't your grandpa's Super Mario, but has very little else to say. Everything looks exactly how you'd picture a new Super Mario Bros. game to look of course with the exception of Large and Charge over here. It's pretty much just another Super Mario Bros. game, but another major key factor when considering why this game doesn't have the same staying power as the classics is what we'll be talking about next.